Hello, hello, you sexy bastards. How are y'all today? People have been requesting this quite a lot. I know, I know it happened. Don't worry, we'll get to it. We are getting to it. Look, we're at Dovati just released his new unbiased history of Byzantium to just Justinian the Great. Okay, we're here. Okay, come on. Last time they introduced my boys, the Bulgarians. Let's see what happens with them again. It's a work of a point. Okay, okay. <laughs> ah yes, Justinian the Great, here we go. So Justin had just died, Justinian made emperor and the barbarians invaded the east, right? Again. So before all that, Kavad had counseled with his lord Satan to help him out, and that he did. Khosrau asked for Justinian's rule to be cursed beyond any emperors before. Both knew his potential and were dead set on ruining Christian Rome's resurrection at any cost. As a starter, he conjured a devastating earthquake that ruined Antioch and wrecked its once strong walls. Yeah. Taking advantage, Kavad raided deep into Syria, capturing four <laughs> big rocks down. 400 nuns and lives, sacrificing them to their dark deities. Oi. You think it's bullshit? Look it up. After this barbaric act, Justinian's dark deities. You think it's bullshit? Look it up. After this barbaric act, Justinian split the eastern legions in two armies. The Armenian one under a general named Sittas, and the Sittas. main one under the one, the only, Belisarius. Name Damn, that's a lot of big chins, so they don't have a... The, uh, Satan worshiper dead. The Magister Militum, he was assigned a new legal assistant, Procopius, a bitter, hate-filled secularist pleb that hated Justinian. And while he would write mostly true history about his reign, he would also write another version filled with lies, slanders, and the old resentment all petty men have towards their betters. Uh, As for the Sasa, oh, wait, oh, oh, wait, right, wait, right. Come on. Balisteria's wife was a dumb whore with a fat arse. End of introduction. Fair enough. As for the Sassanids, Escavad tried Chichini blackmailing Rook. the Romans with the lives of border civilians while gathering a 50,000 strong horde to forever yeah. destroy Dara. Belisarius stood nearby with less than half that. For hundreds of years, Roman generals had been cultivating a strong cavalry. I <sighs> forgot about those derpy ass horses. God damn it. Force, the Bucellari, and under Belisarius, Kinda they fries, became heavily that. armed and trained Romans. Well, half of them. The other half were Huns. You heard it right, for Belisarius, just like Aetius, was yet another Roman who commanded yes. the fear of these savages for Rome's benefit. <laughs> As the Sassanid chieftain sent smug, insulting letters, Belisarius hanged them to his banner for his soldiers to laugh at. The barbarians ah. then charged, but Belisarius had digged huge trenches to cripple the Sassanid cavalry, Oof. had his hunts surging from behind and flanked them. Belisarius slaughtered his fair share and sent the remains fleeing away. Sittas had won his own victory in the north, which also infuriated Damn. Kavad he sent 20,000 cavalry to rush in and sack the vulnerable Antioch. Belisarius Ooh. and his Bucellari intercepted them in time, but here's the thing. Belisarius was one of those great generals that were loved by his soldiers, okay. but deeply, deeply envied by his officers and sub-commanders. So it. out of nowhere his pleb officers attacked Oi. the powder. Oi! Listen, I understand some people can be stupid, but um... They 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 are a lot more than you, and you decide to take a small part of your army and charge them head on. That's some pleb brain right there. That is some pleb brain work. Orders got crushed by the Sassanids, and Belisarius worked his magic to prevent a slaughter. Such would become the standard. Thankfully, Kavad had died by then, so the Sassanids ah. pissed off. Belisarius had returned to the capital, and Justinian prepared to send Khosrau, now the Sassanid king, east to hopefully cause a civil war. And yeah, he did, but he won it, seized oh. power, and sued Chaos for peace while mine. he was weak. But there's more. After growing up together with Justinian and Justin swimming in Anastasius' gold, Khosrau devised that the best way to cripple the Romans was to cripple their economy. Khosrau thus demanded 11,000 pounds of shiny yellow rock for a green to a piece, but not just any piece, an eternal piece. Oh. Justinian agreed on the condition that How much we wanna bet eternal peace lasts like 3 days? gold would pay for defenses against the Huns. The Sassanids were really their bitch. Now here's a tough question. How long will this eternal peace last? Who will break it and for what reason? Okay. Here are your options. Eight weeks? Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Okay. Here are your options, you mean? 
Come on, eight week assassins destroyed data. A thousand years Romans preemptive strike. Fuck no. Ten years assassins kill innocents. Forty three minutes assassins pillage. Uh, I go with option D. Your options. Speaking of Justinian, he by now held such knowledge of the Christian force he could bend the barbarians to his whim, much like Belisarius of the Huns, using said skill to make one of Theodoric's officers, Mundo, now Mundus, Mundo? serve him by slaughtering Slavs and Bulgars in the Balkans, later recalling him to replace Belisarius in the East. Justinian indeed began converting and subduing many bordering barbarians, Huns, Slavs, those desert Bruh. 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 <laughs> What's wrong with my boy? East. Even Goths, Theodoric's own daughter and queen of the Ostrogoths, that is, Amala Swinfa, over which Justinian held such sway Damn. he convinced her to raise her son like a Roman. But none such subservient barbarian quite compared to Hilderic, whom he didn't even have to personally convert and was very much dominant over. So much so, rumor was Hilderic planned to give Africa to Justinian after his death. But being ruled by civilized non heretics was too much for the Vandals to take. Oh, so they shit. usurped and imprisoned Hilderic, now replaced by Gallimer, who Gallimer. refused all of Justinian's demands to restore Hilderic or even send him to Constantinople. Germ Hussing. Speaking Hussing. of Constantinople. Damn, brother! To understand what's to come, again. you must understand Justinian's reforming tendencies. Not only did he purge corruption and injustices wherever possible, but to forever making doing so simple, he assembled the best jurists the empire had to offer, led by the greatest of them, Tribonian. Tasked with compiling every law, edict and custom in the empire into a single civic code. Encoding all laws from as far as the time of Constantine, the Tetrarchy, and further back, they had done it. A single, Damn. unified, detailed account of every law in the empire for all to obey. The Corpus Iuris Civilis, the body of civil law. Forevermore the basis of most legal systems. Hopefully it will last a few centuries. <laughs> this Justinianic code, as it came to be known, wrestled many Jimmys. Mostly heretical, pagan, secular, apostate, and unbaptized Jimmys. That's it's a lot of Jimmys. focused on religious orthodoxy, you see. Justinian persecuted all degenerates that didn't abide by his new law code, including closing the pagan academy in Athens to eternal secularist butthurt forcing all teachers of history, morals, and philosophy to do so through a Christian lens to maximize the veracity of their teachings. And the revised taxation system stipulated in the code was enforced by Justinian's new finance minister, John the Cappadocian. His genius coming from that, once faced with rich tax evaders, he just tortured them until they gave their share. Now Procopius would spread lies that he was corrupt and all, but who would ever pay attention to such a biased telling of history anyway? This all combined with Justinian demanding strict court etiquette for both him and his lady, together Ooh. with Justinian's continuous support for the blue faction earned him enemies all over. Unfortunately, since the Blues won all the time, many green fans shifted sides over the years, eventually making both sides just a bunch of violence-prone plebs. After one of the many pleb fights, Justinian ordered sense. the leaders to be executed, Damn. and as they were hanged, two executions were botched, one for a green and a blue, both taking refuge in a church. After that, Their necks are too thin? Bro, how do you botch a hanging? In the Hippodrome, the angry plebs started demanding them to be pardoned. Justinian ignored the plebs as he should, but they just got angrier. So long the Greens had gone in a losing streak, their entire lives that is, that they started shouting that which they desired most. Nika! Nika! Victory! Nika? Victory! Uh. Soon the entire Hippodrome began shouting Nika Damn. at Justinian. But in truth, all he could hear was something like... <laughs> the unsufferable <laughs> chanting soon made Justinian Nico, Nico, start negotiating, but nope. The plebs were already invading God prisons, liberating the inmates, then setting fire to it. They set fire to everything, really. Hospitals, schools, houses, apartments, Again? imperial Bruh. palace. Imp What's with the Rome burning? What's with everything being Romanish burning? Proving plebs shall forever be below this dang, the Baths of Zeuxippus, uh. built by Septimius Severus and decorated by Constantine oh, himself with statues on, from all over the empire of Greco-Roman heroes, was set ablaze and completely destroyed. The Great Church, once built by Constantius II, then Theodosius II, was also burned and destroyed, along with most of the center of Constantinople. 
Furious and saddened, Justinian asked the plebs what they wanted to stop, and they said the resignation of both John the Cappadocian and Tribonian. Now plebs didn't know how to read, much less who the tax and legal ministers were. And sure enough, Justinian soon found out many senators were feeding information, guiding and directing the writers, so he ordered them all to leave. What? Justinian then pretended to fire John and Tribonian, but as he predicted, the plebs didn't care. By now, the plebs wanted a new emperor, so they dragged the nearest relative of Anastasius, oh, ironically enough, that they could get, his nephew Hypatius. Taken into the Hippodrome, acclaimed emperor by the plebs of a golden chain and surrounded by treacherous senators gearing him up, oh, he started shit. to kind of ride his Have me? At this sight, many bureaucrats urged Justinian to leave, to flee the city and go into hiding. But that's when Theodora, now a true Roman emperor, spoke her mind, Ooh. and she was all like, Oh, monopion thavma. Pion onoma ipi mise, o kalos xenos. Imi Theodora, i fili du Vizandio. That is, I will. Hey, listen, I don't know what you said, but my dick is hard, so I'll go with it. Rather die an empress than live as a pleb. And Justinian wholeheartedly agreed. And so he summoned the two yeah. generals that were around raiding redeployment Mundus and Belisarius, plus one of his bureaucrats. Narcis. No boss for again. Narcis, he gave the gold to go bribe off the cheap green and blue leaders. As for Belisarius, he gave him reinforcements. And make a guess what he asked him to do. Nico, of the 50,000 rioting plebs present, Damn. Belisarius slaughtered 30,000 of them. For crushing the riot, Brother. he was acclaimed as Belisarius Plebicus. But surely enough, the pleb Procopius did not allow that to be recorded. Bringing Hypatius and the conspirators to Justinian, he had them all either executed, uh, exiled, or their property confiscated. Yoink. John and Tribonian were reinstated, and Justinian, now devoid of any popular political opposition, set forth to rebuild Constantinople and the empire to match his eternal dream. The usurpation in Africa never left his mind, and if the Vandals so wanted war with Rome, he would make it the first step of his reconquest. Now, many thought retaking Africa was impossible given how Leo failed with a hundred thousand men and Majorian never even got to leave the port. But Justinian knew he had Belisarius. And yeah, Belisarius was the sent west with just 15,000 men, part of them his Bucellari, starting off with two drunk. Sir, the Huns got drunk and killed a soldier in a fight. Hiccup DDD, he's. <laughs> Huns killing a soldier and him it. executing them. While Oof. the Vandals were dealing with two revolts, one in Libya, which allowed Belisarius oh, yeah. to resupply. I forgot these motherfuckers got Africa somehow. By Jesus Christ. And another in Sardinia, which dragged the Vandal fleet to fight it. Justinian persuaded Amala Swinfa to let Belisarius use the Sicilian ports. And then he just straight up landed beside Carthage. Speaking with the once Roman citizens, yeah, Belisarius forced his mercenaries to be his liberators and pay for everything they took. Learning of this, Gallimer killed Hilderic and marched Aww. to fight Belisarius with 25,000 barbarians. For he had a plan, a plan to let Belisarius pass through the valley near Carthage's Mountains of Salt and flank him between it with his brother's army. But Belisarius had sent his Bucellari to scout though, oh. and them alone found and crushed the Vandal trap, killing Gallimer's brother. Bruh. How does your little detachment of the army lose to the scouts? They are the scouts that come before the army. What the fuck? <laughs> Who, once charging in thinking his plan was working, oh. found his brother's corpse. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Did you, did you plan to ambush someone only to get ambushed in your own ambush? Oh no, oh no, 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 no. And lamented the loss of this monstrous, vile barbarian. Sad that the world was now a better place. Then Belisarius showed up, destroyed his army, and Gallimar fled. As Belisarius took Carthage, Gallimar raised a new army with his other brother back from Sardinia. <laughs> sieging Carthage and cutting its water. This dude about to lose all his brothers. He tried to get the Huns to change sides, which just wasn't nope. going to happen with Belisarius around. Despite outnumbered again, Belisarius charged outside of Carthage and Jeez. crashed into the Vandals several times, killing Gallimar's other brother and making the world an even better better place. Maybe he has a couple more brothers. Belisarius then liberated Hippo, and while far too late to save St. Augustine, he got ah. in just in time to retake all of the treasures the Vandals had taken from Rome, which itself paid for the whole campaign. <laughs> Gallimer had prepared a feast that had taken from Rome, which itself paid 
did for the Sir, the Han won't give me back the menorah. Whole campaign. <laughs> the had prepared a feast in the event of his certain victory, which Belisarius had for himself as he sat on the Vandal throne. Damn, Galamon yum. was eventually found and captured, the last remnants of Vandal resistance crushed, Sardinia and Corsica reconquered, and Damn. all North African cities retaken. A Roman administration was put back in charge, the freed Romans cheered for their liberators, and Africa was again a province of the Roman Empire. And let's not forget. Okay, uh, Gilimar was the last Germanic ruler. Uh, Belisarius went straight to the palace and sat on the throne of the Vandal King. 600 sun mercenaries defeated. <gasps> 2000 Vandals. Damn, bro. It ended in the utter route of the Vandals. Eliminated the power of the Vandals for good. Uh, it was the first Justinian first war of... It was the first of Justinian first war of Recon something something. <laughs> Africa was formally restored to the Imperial Rubel. Asaias returned to the Constantine. Blah blah blah. The... Strength 10,000 infantry, 5k cavalry versus 40 mostly cavalry. Wait, who's I mean, I imagine this is Belisarius, right? Wait, was that Donald Duck's fat cock? Damn, brother, what is with that cock? Sorry. Van wait, Vandal woman married Byzantine soldiers and set up as distinct ethnic unit. They disappeared. Many others were put into Imperial service. Damn. Clap. Justinian had come one step closer to his dream, and Belisarius Plebicus Vandalicus to an immortal legacy. Justinian let him choose to either stay and govern Africa or return home, and he chose the latter. For such a magnificent Damn. Roman victory, Justinian rewarded Belisarius with the right of all victorious Romans, the first triumph in ages. Whoa. To prove his humility, Belisarius marched his triumph on foot, dragging the imprisoned Gallimer and all the wealth retaken from Africa. At Justinian's side, Gallimer quoted some gibberish and was told to shut his barbarian mouth. Justinian had not been idle during it all, using Anastasius' gold to rebuild Constantinople better Minecraft and better than clubs. ever before. But his greatest project was the reconstruction of the city's great church. He gave the builders all the money they needed, ordering the greatest church of all time built as fast as possible. In only five years, he got his wish, with the construction of the greatest church in history, the Shrine of the Holy Wisdom of God, shortened to Holy Wisdom, in Greek, Hagia Sophia. Entering Hagia the church Sophia. for the first time, Justinian <laughs> So what is the deal with this man around? <laughs> Was that? Didn't the Hun soldier yoink that shit? <laughs> Solomon, I have outdone you. Ooh. Just ask Titus. While Justinian was busy building, his sister Vigilantia the Younger was busy breeding, giving the emperor two nephews, Damn. Justin and Marcellus, plus Projecta, who due to being beautiful and the emperor's niece was a magnet for usurpers empire-wide. <laughs> but now history focuses on Italy, as is so often used to, with the Goths growing to despise Roman-friendly Amalasuinfa taking her son to be raised Aww. a proper bloodthirsty barbarian. So much so, he died a young man. Now Aww. rumors were abound that Amala Swinfa planned to give Italy to Justinian, and even when she appealed to her cousin Fiodo had for help, he betrayed, killed, and usurped her. Oh, this but prompted the boobies, bro. How can you slay the boobies? Fucking germs. One of the once Romans under Gothic rule, Liberius, to defect back to the Empire and inform Justinian what happened. All the Emperor had to do was look at Belisarius and he knew <laughs> what to do. For too long, if the I Roman Empire had been robbed of its home, God of damn. its birthplace. With the same skill it had conquered the world, the horrors of the 5th century would be overturned. And so, Justinian ordered Belisarius to Make retake Rome for its Empire. Pay. 
With only a little more than 7,000 men, Belisarius sailed through the west and seized almost all of southern Italy, while Mundus was sent to reconquer Dalmatia. The Goths did push them back, but he re retook it at the cost of his life, Oof. with reinforcements securing it. Called the conquest it. of Italy was going so fast, Fiodo had almost just gave it all up for peace. But then the mercenaries in Africa revolted, killing his momentum. I'm pretty sure uh, this is the battle where uh, Ephyrus fought. And the. You know, and forcing Belisarius to quick it. And shit. Justinian soon replaced him in the task with his cousin and heir, Germanus, who crushed the rebellion, letting Belisarius go back to Italy. And now, on his way, he way to come, to come. impossible to siege <laughs> given how he has spread out his forces to secure the south. But as an Isaurian mercenary Big wandered rock. about an aqueduct, he found the most curious thing. Dragging Belisarius to see it, it was a water most curious. Huh. Uganga like strange rock. Thing. Dragging Belisarius to see it, it was a waterway that led straight into the city. Belisarius Ooh. then ordered it widened, and by the next day, the city was taken. Damn. But Fiodo had by then had been usurped by the new Gothic king, Vitigis, who retreated with his forces north. Indeed, in fear of Belisarius, the Goths had left Rome alone, and with a papal invitation into the Eternal City, oh Belisarius marched Bruh. there. After decades, what was Rome after they've done with it? I mean, they pillaged the shit out of it, so. Deeds of barbarian tyranny, Rome was finally back under Roman rule. Well, what was left of it anyway? After the fall of the West, the economic destruction and multiple sackings, Rome was now a shadow of its former self. Now almost entirely ruined and abandoned houses from a bygone age, populated only by a few tens of thousands of weak, miserable plebs. Vandal's guts would have wept. Vitigis though Damn. had gathered his Gothic horse and was set on taking Rome once more. Belisarius, however, was set on fighting for every inch of the Aurelian walls, digging a huge moat around it. And even when the aqueducts were blocked, Belisarius had a mill built between two boats on the Tiber, wait, ensuring grain could wait, super block. What? Oh, what? Belisarius had a mill built between. Glad we had these two dudes. <laughs> two boats on the Tiber, ensuring grain could still be made into bread and feed everyone. But before the Goths fully sieged Rome, Belisarius took his Bucellari to scout to the Tiber crossing. Something On their here. way, they were ambushed by a huge Gothic force who recognized Belisarius' white-faced horse and focused on him. Ooh. Shot, slashed and hit all over, Belisarius slaughtered his way out, killing many Goths at the cost of his armor and being drenched in blood. Being pursued back to Rome, the soldiers at the gates didn't recognize Belisarius with the helmet injuries and blood. Given really? only seconds to react, Belisarius ordered a counter charge at a far bigger Gothic cavalry. And he did it with such ferocity the soldiers realized that, yeah, that was Belisarius. Fi <laughs> Finally let in, he commended the soldiers for their caution. Damn. And as the Goths tried fucking with the Tiber's mill by throwing corpses in the water, Belisarius set up a chain across the river to uh -huh. catch all the breeze. Later, the Goths tried pulling up some siege towers on the walls. The animals were killed and the siege towers disabled. Belisarius then began hiring some locals into the army, make them proper Romans again. And with the new reinforcements from you Justinian, he started launching several Bucellari raids, scattering the Goths and destroying their camps. Vitigis got so How bad, many people does this dude have? How many gods does he had have? He ordered all the senators he had taken hostage in Ravenna to be slaughtered. Oh. Little did he know. Thank God. Good job. How is that a bad thing? Oh, that no one really cared about the yeah. senators anymore. For what? a long time, really. Senator of what? Day, the plebs Ro? conscripted, disobeyed orders and just went to loot the Gothic camp. Pleb getting power. all attacked and Belisarius once again had to work his magic to minimize losses. During the siege, Belisarius received orders from Theodora to substitute the current Gothic appointed Pope, Silverius, with the one she thought was a Monophysite ally, Vigilius, who was just pretending to get her support. And after Silverius was caught conspiring with senators and gods, Belisarius exiled the former and <sighs> elevated the latter. Procopius would put you page further and further lies to his mirror. Also, an incompetent fool of a general that lost every battle and was only saved by his brilliant secretary's advice again and again. Sarius, but he made Damn. sure to keep such lies in his book of lies, awaiting for a better chance to demean him in the future. Sick of fighting, Vitigis begged the Romans to surrender, and Belisarius replied, 
Fuck off. As for Rome, moreover, which we have captured, in holding it we hold nothing which belongs to others. But it was you who trespassed upon this city in former times, though it did not belong to you at all. And now you have given it back, however unwillingly, to its ancient possessors. And whoever of you has hopes of setting foot in Rome without a fight is mistaken in his judgment. For as long as Belisarius lives, it is impossible for him to rel- Why do I feel like Belisarius is about to croak? Relinquish this city. That's a dead flag if I've seen on it. And on. The mills couldn't produce enough bread, mill sausage became the standard, the plebs began plebbing, but as the Bucellari and Huns kept wrecking the Goths, Vitigis sued for a truce. During it, thousands of more reinforcements were sent by Justinian, led by Vitalian's nephew, John. Proof that not all nephews of great Romans John were great the Romans themselves. Vitigis then broke the truce, cause of course, attacking the Tiber and miserably failing. Damn. With Vitigis retreating back through the long repaired Milvian Bridge, getting a farewell gift by having half of his hordes slaughtered before he crossed. Oh. Belisarius then gave John 2,000 Bucellari to push north and leave no forts behind. John then went northeast, left all forts behind and took a city in <laughs> Brother, come on! Leave no forts behind? Leave all forts behind? <laughs> Near Ravenna. Belisarius told him to return, lest he be encircled by Goths, but John refused, and he was encircled by Goths. It was then that 7,000 more reinforcements arrived from the east, led by Narses. Belisarius planned to just leave the insubordinate John to his fate and advance north given the Gothic numbers, but Narses remembered him of the 2,000 invaluable Bucellari with him. Belisarius insisted on his position, but Narses <laughs> didn't relent because of a literal technicality. So, Wait, what? Again, Justinian's order, Owen Attali should obey Belisarius' order as it as is in interest of the Empire, Justinian's instru instruction for campaign. Belisarius went to work his magic before his army tore apart. As the Goths starved John to death, they were completely surrounded Damn. on all sides by a gigantic Roman army, with several campfires seen from the distance and a large navy on the coast. Terrified, the Goths lifted the siege and fled to Ravenna. Belisarius then told his men to end the charade, having used a series of tricks to pretend having a larger army. Being saved from certain death, John expressed his most sincere gratitude to Narses. As Belisarius oh, what happened there? to Narses. Oh, he need him. I thought he put his pants down, was about to give him the sausage. As Belisarius liberated more and more of Italy, Mediolanum revolted to his side and begged for a garrison to defend it. Belisarius could spare around 1,000 men, but other okay. cities asked for garrisons as well, oh. so only about 300 actually got there. Bruh. The Franks, on the other hand, having subjugated the Burgundians and siding with the Goths, gave them 10,000 Burgundians to go help siege Medellin. Versus 300. Belisarius then urgently ordered the nearby John to go rush there. And oh, John. Oh, how are you gonna fuck this up, John? I am not ready for this. I, I am not prepared for this, peoples. John saved the city, but he refused, saying he only took orders from Narses. Belisarius then wrote to Narses, who agreed with the orders, and when John read them, he caught a mild fever and delayed his march. Meanwhile, Mediolanum's guard had all starved to death, with the survivors saying they would open the gates if only the barbarians spared the city's population. Which they didn't. Mediolanum was almost completely destroyed, the entire population either killed, raped or enslaved, all the wealth stolen and most buildings burned down. The Yo, can John go die in a ditch somewhere please? Franks themselves would invade, but North Italy had been so John raised and ruined they couldn't sustain their horde, and returned. As the devastation spread north, Belisarius reported it all to Justinian, who got so mad he recalled Narses from Italy and Kill explicitly him? wrote back that Belisarius and Belisarius alone was the only authority in Italy. All this while desperate, desperate Vitigis tried one of his last tricks, sending envoys to Kosral, telling him to break the eternal peace now that most of Rome's legions and generals were in Italy. Having almost completely taken the north, Belisarius then cornered Vitigis in Ravenna, eager to end the war with total victory. But Justinian had caught wind of Vitigis' envoys to Kosral. Ah, not really. He just knew the barbarians would backstab him <laughs> sooner or later. So I mean, Alyssa, at this point, the Romans have been betrayed about 99.9% uh, .9 of the whole um, barbarian, you know, e e 
diplomatical act, so mm, kind of hard not to see that. The Sarius they was might about get betrayed to take again. Ravenna, orders came for him to make a compromise treaty with the Goths. As a not so subtle Jabba John, he said he would only do it if Justinian himself signed it. Ooh. Not because of insubordination, but just to buy enough time to show that Ravenna was about to fall. He didn't even have to wait for that, cause Vitigis came up with the last of his tricks, proposing Belisarius peace for reviving the Western Roman Empire, Ooh. with Belisarius as the new Western Roman Emperor. And the Goths as his loyal guardians of Italy, if only he betrayed really? Justinian. And yeah, Belisarius told Vitigis he was all for it. Thank the you, Demo. then opened the gate, let Belisarius in, and he arrested Vitigis, freed Amala Swinfa's daughter, Mata Swinfa, hey. and back all the- Hey, yay, my dick. <laughs> what? Why does that little tooth make her look so cute, though? What the fuck? <laughs> she got some titties as well. Okay. Okay, I can't do it. I don't. I don't have a vampire tooth. Okay. The wealth they had stolen from Italy and proclaimed Ravenna reconquered in the name of Justinian. Vitigis would be sent to Constantinople to die in captivity. Matasuinfa <laughs> would be set to marry Germanus, and most important of all, after years of fierce campaign, Damn. Italy, the it's home back. province where it all began, How is had been go freed wrong? from barbarian tyranny. In his bliss, Justinian would ask Belisarius for details, a full report of his exploits in Italy. Belisarius would make a proud smile, and in the honor of Stilicho, Aetius, Majorian, and so many more, let him see the casualties. Oh god. The island was quickly captured. He made a triumphal entry to Syracuse. Took the gods by surprise. Belisarius launched his troops in a brutal sack. The citizens of Rome decisively supported Belisarius, not surprised there. Silverius was cons conspiring with the Gothic king and several Roman senators to open the gates. Belisarius had him stripped of his vestments and exiled. Why did not kill him? The gods were unable to respond, the gods were routed and fled to the hills for safety. Also, gods were defeated, the gods had suffered so many casualties, the gods were routed and fled to the... Jesus Christ, that's a big ass pile. That was a co op power of trash. He inflicted heavy casualties by launching many successful sorties, causing serious losses to the gods from minimal Roman casualties. Vitigis was forced to retreat. Belisarius, one of the most famous and successful Roman generals. Reconquered Sicily 5000 points. <laughs> Reconquered Magna Gratia. Of <laughs> 10,000 points. 5,000 points reconquered Naples. Reconquered. Okay, that thing. Why does he only have one life though? <laughs> this can reconquer Castalia to go. Damn. Much of this case of Emily. Result Roman victory, Roman skills will defend the cavalry gods. Strength 5k man versus 25 to 30k man. How's the god? The, the lentest. Rome's revival was at hand. Yesterday, Africa. Today, Italy. Tomorrow, Hispania. Go. Britain, Dacia, really? Justinian couldn't help but dream. Peace had been achieved in the West, which means war would soon come in the East. You see, angry that Rome was recovering its lost provinces, Khosrau began grasping at straws to reinitiate conflict. Demanding part of the Vandal loot, cause I kid you not, the what? campaign was only possible be- Give shiny rock me not attack when you give shiny rock me one shiny rock. Because of the eternal peace. Ah. Justinian sent him scrap, but not enough for the barbarian. Furthermore, Khosrow had been wanting to consolidate his access to the Black Sea. Would make a Sassanid attack on Constantinople easier. <clears throat> but it was only after Justinian began enforcing his new lock code there that he began preparations to break the peace treaty. So... Did any of you actually guess wrong? Speaking of Fuck, enemies, of I got I guess wrong. I gotta be honest with you. I thought it was gonna be the four weeks. My bad. I, oh no, 43 minutes. I, I was guessing this shit. 
<laughs> hey, can you blame me though? They done this like 50 times already. How am I supposed to know they're actually gonna take 10 years? That's a lot of time not to be, you know, me go kill, me go kill, me go pillage, me go rape. No, I completely guess wrong. Speaking of yes. enemies of humanity, Justinian had been trying really hard to end the Monophysite heresy. If their whole shtick was over how nature. many natures Jesus has, then Justinian hoped by saying Jesus was divine, human, and a single person would leave things vague enough for the heretics to relent. But oh. nope. Moreover, when the Pope yeah, visited, he convinced him only the persecution and slaughter of heretics would make Jesus happy. And through persistent hatred, he managed to confine most of the Monophysite heresy to Egypt. What yeah. he couldn't confine, though, were the Slavs and Bulgars that again raided the Danube. Hey, the second... these are the buggers. We got a triple A. Listen, I don't, I don't got. Listen, I gotta hide my uh, third eye nowadays because it sees too much. Okay, but uh, we got this shit. I, I wear makeup. Okay. Deep into phrase. At the very least, a few Christian monks had managed to smuggle a few silkworm eggs from a far eastern barbarian kingdom, setting up a native silk production facility in Constantinople. But in the capital, the only real problem was overpopulation. Too many plebs were breeding and moving there. But it was all an ironic effort on that site. In just another normal day of ruling, building and purging, Justinian's surroundings suddenly became darker. Everything became colder and colder. Looking at the sun, its light diminished severely, its heat only a fraction of what it normally was. This darkness covered the empire for years, noxious fumes flowed through the air and the worst side of heretics, like Theodora, emerged, with Damn. her incriminating John the Cappadocian of treason. Theodora began being a bitch about a great many things really, but Justinian cared not. Uh that bitchiness is why he married her. No, he just exiled John to end the matter and concentrate on the apocalyptic omen at hand. The diminished solar activity crippled can't farm, farming can't eat. and famine ensued. The but stunts. by then Justinian was still too busy sending reinforcements to Belisarius in Italy and civilizing savages. And it had been right there Khosrau publicly broke the peace and invaded the empire. But Dara stood strong in his path. Why not Unable fall? to take Dara, Khosrau faked some diplomatic talk with a local city's bishop. And as he returned home, he burst through the gates Dumbass. and took it. With Belisarius still trying to get a high score in Italy and <laughs> Sita's crushing an Armenian insurrection, getting killed for it <gasps> by an insurrectionist named Artabanes, Justinian sent Germanus to protect Antioch. But its walls were still a wreck, having no oh. choice but to retreat. Khosrau thus led his hordes to take and utterly ruin Antioch, God slaughtering damn. tens of thousands, further destroying the city as burn, much as baby, he could, burn. baffing the blood of murdered innocents in the Mediterranean, and once he finally left, he reigned terror in other cities, forcing chariot games to be rigged so that the Greens, his favorites, would win. With no army nearby, Justinian agreed with bribing the savage for peace, which he agreed to, and then immediately broke... Unga Bunga, me has shiny rock, me give shiny rock if you stop attacking. it by extorting cities on his way out, and attacking Dara trying to destroy its walls, only then leaving. With him he dragged 30,000 Antiochian citizens, making them slaves and forcing them Damn. to live in a hellish version of their ruined city, given an ironic Better name for its ironic torture. Justinian had had enough. If the barbarian Sassanids so wanted war, he promised they would get a war that they would never forget. Told to rush east, Belisarius had no time for another triumph and Damn. prepared to crush Khosrau for good. And although his officers would act up again, Belisarius focused <laughs> on pushing the barbarians away and when treating with them. He... Why do I not know about this Belisarius? Why is he such a Chad and I do not know about him? What is this? took most of his army carrying just hunting equipment to make it seem like a small hunting party from a gigantic army further west. And like the Goths, the Sassanids will be it. back. After this turn of tables, Artabanes and his forces would defect to the Roman side and were allowed to. In these dark years, Projecta had been married to the now governor of Africa. Then he was killed by a Vandal survivor who sought to rebuild the Vandal kingdom and take the Africa Emperor's is for himself. Then Artabanes murdered him to prove loyalty to said emperor and also to have said emperor's niece for himself ah. but when he took her to constantinople to marry Theodora had already returned to her senses and noting that he was you know already married she forbid him from marrying him. <laughs> oh my man <laughs> not the double time world champion my boy was already what you mean motherfucker? what you mean he was already married <laughs>
<laughs> I was already married. What do you mean marry again? Her knees infuriating. Wrong him. religion, just brother. You can't have a haram here. Far too stressed out to care. While in the frontier, Belisarius was getting the legions available and ready, battle formations taken and plans devised. And he died. Only for nothing to happen. Oh. The border was dead silent. The Sassanids never attacked. The only thing to come from the east the being chaos tales betrayed of us? horror and death. Meanwhile, a in new Egypt, challenge. a sailor was working on a ship delivering wheat to all across the empire. Ah, shit. But one day, he started feeling strange pains in his head, in his arms and legs. He couldn't sleep well. He was filled with the most terrible nightmares. His eyes went bloodshot. Little by little, other sailors started reporting similar pains, ever more painful as the sun darkened ever more. Here we go. A little later, a ship was noticed crashing into port, and the dock workers went to check inside. To their horror, they found the entire ship's crew rotting in pools of blood. Trying to at least understand what happened, they found strange dark spots all over the corpses. Bubones, the mark of the Black Death. The bubonic plague soon took over all of Egypt, and was unknowingly carried off in several more green ships to all corners of the empire. City by city, people began to fall ill, vomit blood, rot from the inside, and die. No one understood the cause, much less a cure. This was the work of pure evil. In Constantinople, Wait, cure. This was the work There is of that. It invades the brain, turns off your neocortex, turns you into such a heretic, you die of stupidity, the rest is just <laughs> peripheral. <laughs> it could be pure evil. In Constantinople, <laughs> of the 500,000 citizens therein, over 200,000 would be killed. That's about right All for the percentage of people dead, right? On lockdown, leaving only to bury their friends and family. Mass graves were ordered dig, and no matter how much Justinian tried to provide relief, the devastation to the economy, armies and peoples of the empire was far too great to mitigate. The plague spared none, especially not unreplaceable great minds like Tribonians, Damn. another of its victims. Indeed, even Justinian himself was eventually infected. The Bobonis consuming his body, the severe fever rising up and feeling of impending death seizing him. At the height of their terror, the infected began seeing demonic apparitions in the future. The horsemen of the apocalypse, headless demons, and hellish ghosts posing as angels <laughs> dissuading them. <laughs> I brought a veteranium for a space. Stab him, stab him, stab him. <laughs> Fuck you, Praetorians. Uh. The one true faith in exchange for their lives. <sighs> the deaths in the millions, the economic destruction and deep trauma far surpassed that of any short-term crisis or barbarian threat ever endured. In all, a full third of the Empire's population was killed. And the truth is, you would never recover. Better said, it could not be allowed uh, to recover. And when uh, actually, my tits are feeling weird. When the oh, ultimate damn, vulture came for the Empire its weakest, he resurrected the Ostrogoths from the depths of hell, <laughs> unleashing them once again over Italy. The damn. very second Italy was in peril, Justinian woke up, healed from the plague and calling on Belisarius again. Sending him to Italy again, suffering the presence of John again, God he disobeyed orders... Damn and it, John! Why is he not dead yet? Why plague kills some great people, but fucking John is still alive? God damn it. Fuck you, John. Went for easy victories again. Rallying behind some undead goth named Totilla, the goths laid siege to the Eternal <laughs> City, whose garrison, what a plague spared in anyway, the were barbarian city. mercenaries. Speaking barbarian to barbarian, Totilla convinced Anisarion to turn traitor and open the gates for him. <laughs> Once inside, Totilla sent a letter to the Emperor warning that if the Romans didn't leave Italy, then he would destroy Rome for good. Again? He received a quick reply, daring him to even try. Terrified, Totila just marched south to attack the Edict General that was all by himself, opening way for Belisarius to re retake Rome from him. But back in the east, so many years of heresy, sunless days, and cancerous behavior had taken a toll on Theodora. So much so, she contracted cancer and Wait. died. Just Wait, can cancer catch cancer though? Breast cancer? Because of those QJ Teres? 
Justinian deeply mourned her death. Oh, come on. She was often a pain of a heretic wife, but she was his pain of a heretic wife. Hey. Uncoincidentally, Belisarius was recalled back to Constantinople shortly afterwards. And having again saved Rome, the aging general chose to enter a well-deserved retirement. Oh. Saying goodbye to such a competent general hurt, but some consolation laid with his cousin, Germanus, plus his two sons, Justin <laughs> and... Germanus? Hey, I bet he gave her anus a ger... a germ? Fuck, I did not think that joke through. God damn it. Justinian the Younger, Ooh, big who had before marrying Matasunfa, who was only now pregnant. Their loyalty was proved when Artabanes, still bitter, plotted to murder Justinian <sighs> and the retired Belisarius, usurping the empire in the name of Germanus, who he never informed about. <laughs> what that day to be <laughs> ended up finding out. <laughs> Bro, how are you gonna usurp and make someone emperor and not tell the dude? It's like, hey, yeah, fuck yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I just, uh, he's gonna agree. Why? Who wouldn't agree to become an emperor and kill his uh? What is he like, uh, brother's father? Uh, whatever. Telling his father, who then told the excubitors, who then arrested Artabanes, <laughs> forcing him to go fight against the undead Goths. Having no sons of his own, Justinian sent his cousin and apparent heir, Germanus, to finish Look the rest of Italy. <laughs> then he died of a random illness, not even bubonic plague, leaving a pregnant widow behind and a decrepit Liberius to But he only just civilized me with the mad cock. Place him in Italy. Liberius did defend God Sicily, damn. but that wasn't enough. So Justinian sent Narses Where is to John's over, bitch ass? And given how the plague gutted the legions, he gave him the funds necessary to hire a whole bunch of barbarian mercenaries. Hey, I see, Among the hey, I see green. Is that my triad boys? Come on, Bulgarians, let's go. of barbarians he hired was a new Germanic horde settling nearby Italy. The Lombards. John did what he did best, winning an easy victory, and Narses regrouped with Belisarius' veterans to amass some 30,000 men Fucking total. John. And with all of those legions and mercenaries, he crushed the undead Gothic legions, killing Totila. Again. Nice. The main battle won, Again. Narses paid and told the Lombards to leave. The longer they stayed in Italy, the more troublesome they Oh, they're not gonna leave, are they? God. The Goths had taken Rome again, but Narcissus re re retook it. And when the last remnants of their re -re hordes gathered it. near what was once Pompeii, Narcissus outnumbered them to death. And with that, <laughs> ending what Belisarius had already ended. Just in time for the second Frankish intervention. In their infinite barbarian wisdom, the Franks decided to split their horde. One marched east and was crushed by Narcissus' legions, and the other marched west, where they caught the bubonic plague and deteriorated away. Damn. The Ostrogoths were once again dead, but the Visigoths were still kicking around. Kicking meaning raping, and around meaning Hispania. Barbarians being barbarians, they were once again slaughtering <laughs> each other to be king of the mud huts. Nine, nine, one nine. Would be mud hut majesty asking the nearby Romans for help. Being told of this challenge. Uh, what? The would be mud hut majesty asking the nearby Romans for help. Being told of this chance, even after Bruh. decades of rule, war, and plague, the death of his loved ones and deterioration of his mind and body, Justinian still believed in the dream that once was Rome and so ordered Liberius to reconquer as much of Hispania as possible. So Do as the Visigoths kept <laughs> killing each other, Liberius led an astonishing reconquest of the birthplaces of Trajan and Hadrian to beyond what was once New Carthage. The victorious Mudhut Majesty tried fighting back, but failed, for now. Grr. This was it. The Eastern Roman Empire stood at its greatest extent. And? Africa, Italy, and even some of Hispania were conquered. And? But due to the plague, wars, and disasters, the empire's population was now lower than it had been decades before Damn. the conquests. It's really all downhill from here. Eh. Throughout the countless attempts that would yet be made to restore what Rome once was, none would ever come as close as Justinian's. As for Justinian's later years, they would be the same as for all of those who ruled Rome for decades. Disappointing. For all of his great reforms, he could never make Betray this. <laughs> <thing> <laughs> <like> <laughs> Betrayal, good. <laughs> Sounds like the fucking Senate, my guy. For all of his great reforms, he could never make the Senate worthwhile. At least now he was led by a capable patrician, Paul, keeping one of the last Paul? patrician clans of old Roman origins still alive. 
The Black Death came and left again and again, but every time it killed only the non-immune, little children and babies, Damn. never remarrying and thus remaining childless. Justinian's two likeliest Just heirs, so the two Justins, vowed that whoever of them became the emperor, the other would be made his right-hand man. Oh, why do I not like this dude's face? He d he ain't got the big chin, brother. Wait, what? No. Fuck up Here's a my tough video. question. Taking over oh. the. I, come on! Why he stop doing that? Who's going to succeed the Grand Emperor? He's killed and loved General Fuck no. He's incompetent family relative, yes. A horrible usurper that ruins everything. A god tier random that saves the Empire. Uh, it's either B or C. I... B? I mean, listen, Rome has a history of just random people becoming Emperor for whatever the fuck reason, so it might be C as well. But I'm gonna go with, uh, yeah, let's go with B. Taking over their father's legacy, Justin and Justinian the Younger joined the legions and helped fend off any Sassanid attacks. Was his hordes see. destroyed by his own lord's plague Satan and now life. facing capable Romans again, Khosrau begrudgingly agreed to a peace. For now. Forever peace? Just as soon as there was peace in the empire as the Bulgars were invading the Balkans again. With no active generals nearby, die, Justinian turned to Belisarius for help, who dutifully left retirement and gathered some 300 retired veterans, plus some civilians fleeing south to fight the barbarians. Camping nearby a passage Belisarius knew the Bulgars would cross, he, and say it with me, lit several fires to make it seem like he had a gigantic army camping nearby, scaring the Bulgars into only sending a few- Unga bunga gulam army a strash- That means unga bunga big army scary. A few thousand barbarians to cross, who he stopped with 100 veterans, while the other 200 veterans flanked them from the woods, making them flee to the north. And yeah, the barbarians just kept- God damn it, the third eye didn't help us there, did it? Kept falling for this, hardly surprising though. Justin would take over from there, and face yet another barbarian nomad horde migrating west, the Afars. Afars. Fleeing from the east, they demanded lands in the empire. Shockingly, Justinian refused, but before the Avars invaded, Justin had repaired the damage the Bulgars had dealt to the local defenses. So they just, you know, chilled beyond the ah. Danube. For now. But then one day, Belisarius was forcefully dragged into a court and accused of most heinous treason against the Emperor, the case being overseen by a certain Procopius, who immediately judged him guilty wait, and condemned wait, what the fuck? him to imprisonment. Feel no why. Thrown into a dark cell to rot away, he wait. was quickly freed from it by none other than Justinian himself, who instantly pardoned him of all made-up charges. But his freedom wouldn't last long as Belisarius would soon after die in his home estate, and with him, the last of Justinian's oh, will to keep oh. on living. Despite growing ever less attached to this rip. mortal world, Justinian would make one final attempt to end the Monophysite heresy. Heretical and what reason N867 of why you should, you should worship Satan. Heresy bad repent. He didn't achieve in his prime, he didn't achieve in his old age. In retrospect, Justinian's life had been one of constantly fighting against the odds. When his enlightened reforms drew the wrath of the old system, he reined them into submission. When all believed the West had fallen for good, he had Damn. Belisarius prove them wrong. As heretics continually tried to further divide the church, he acted as the foremost defender of the faith's unity. When the plague came to usher in the apocalypse, he survived it and kept the empire intact. Barbarian after barbarian would attack from every direction, but the generals he appointed sought to beat them all back. All this conflict, all this death and suffering, but Justinian never regretted it, for he knew that there once was a time. I am Svanstianus Magnus, and I send this message to all Romans in the future seeking refuge from barbarity. A dream, a dream were fighting the dream is here the dream After is waiting so many decades at a night of his 83rd year Damn. Justinian became weaker bruh 83 years back then is like 300 years now my guy lived for a fucking damn and weaker with only a local palace bureaucrat to notice what the great emperor's last thoughts were, no one knows. Was it pride in his loss that would stand for millennia? Was it disdain for the plague that killed so many and hindered his reconquests? Was it about his heirs, or his enemies and the heretics? Or perhaps it was joy over those he would get to soon see. In the end, 
none would know. After four decades of great rule, Justinian was dead. Damn. The tragedy of the fall of Rome looms large in the common psyche, prompting many to have asked through the centuries. What if there just had been the right reforms? What if they had given their all to reconquer the lost provinces? What if they had fought against the tides of history? Justinian, Belisarius, and so many heroes of this age were that what if. Decades they spent fighting to restore what once was and achieved far more than most ever dared dream of. While all men, no matter how great, eventually die, for as long as there are those who remember the dream that was Rome, the reign of he who dreamt it the most shall never be forgotten. The reign of Justinian Damn. the Great. Oi. I was like, what the hell is happening? Made all possible and chosen by the Hebrew techno plutocracy that bankrolls this channel. Damn, that was awesome. That was awesome. I've missed his videos. I've missed uh, Dovati's videos. Uh, okay, okay, peeps. Uh, people have been asking me to go back because I started with Julius Caesar. I'm pretty sure. That's like the first video of his I watched. And they said that he had a series before that. Uh, comments, yay or nay? Do we go back to that or nah? Let me know. I mean, it's up, it's up to you guys because it's probably gonna be another month or two before his next video. I'm excited for this. This is such a good series. Kind of excited to see what my three eyebrows do in the future. I mean, I know what they're gonna do in the future, but I'm, I'm excited for it, okay? Third eye, third eye brother. You gotta believe. Chadicus Maximus. <laughs> okay, buddy. <Let's> <laughs> uh, Abdullah Bien. Damn. And that was it. Unbiased history. Byzantium 2. Justinian the Great. Can't believe the boy lived to the age of 83? That's insane. And with the Plague Plague? God damn, this dude's insane. Anyway, a uh, quick thank you to my YouTube members and Patreons. And I uh, hope y'all enjoyed this. I'll catch y'all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.